It is official. 2023 European Ryder Cup team has its new captain, and that is the 44-year-old Englishman Luke Donald. Following Henrik Stenson's dismissal two weeks ago, there was speculation as to who would replace one of the latest Live Golf signees, and today that question has been answered. Guy Kinnings, the European Ryder Cup director, had this to say this morning on the decision. Luke is a former world number one who possesses a superb Ryder Cup record, so he undoubtedly has the credentials required to be a successful European captain. He is hugely respected by the players and by the wider support team at Ryder Cup Europe, who have already done an immense amount of work behind the scenes to give him a strong platform for the remaining 14 months before the match gets underway. And here is the former world number one, Luke Donald, so excited and truly honored to be named European Ryder Cup captain. I'm really looking forward to the next 14 months and getting my team ready for Rome. And a good Monday to you, Damon Hack, alongside Eamon Lynch of Golf Week Magazine. This busy year continues your thoughts on the naming of Luke Donald as European Ryder Cup captain. Well, Luke Donald was one of the candidates in this initial conversation when Europe was choosing its captain earlier this year. You could also make an argument he ought to have been the mm. choice then because Luke Donald was never part of any Live Golf narrative. That was known to the committee who made the choice at the time, but they took a gamble and went with Henrik Stenson. The gamble didn't pay off. Better late than never. They've got the right captain now, just a little bit later than they should have had him. They have someone who is calm, experienced, I'd say steady, professional and maybe most importantly successful in the Ryder Cup experience four times a player and on four winning teams when you think about it you know 2004 2006 2010 2012 that's also important I would imagine and he's also been a vice captain in the last year Ryder Cup so he's seen both ends of that scale he saw Thomas Bjorn lead the team mm. to a decisive victory in Paris in 2018 he saw Podrick Harrington lead his team to a fairly striking defeat last year in Whistling Straits. So he's got, a, he's got a pretty deep reservoir of knowledge to draw from there. He does indeed. A former world number one now, the Ryder Cup captain for Europe. For more on this story, let's bring in our own Rex Hoggard. Rex, what's your reaction to the choice of Luke Donald? Damon, I love the way you just described him as calm and organized and all of these things that we all know is going to make him a very good captain. But the one thing I took away from this morning's announcement and really all sort of the noise leading up to this is how emotional it's been. I've covered a lot of these and they've never been emotional like this and it has everything to do with how this sort of transpired with Henrik Stenson taking on the role and then being removed from the role. And there was a lot of chatter back and forth. I mean, certainly Henrik Stenson had some things to say yesterday when he finished up at the Live Golf event. Luke Donald has had some things to say about Henrik Stenson's decision to go to Live Golf. It, it, we got a little bit of a glimpse into the inner workings of how this works with, today with Luke Donald talking about the idea that he did sign a contract that said he can't go to Live Golf. And I think this is probably one of the biggest divides I have seen in how, where, where professional golf is at the moment because you have two guys that have played on the same team. They've been teammates. They've been in the team room together. And now you see how far apart they are. Rex, how did Luke Donald emerge as the front runner after Henrik? Was it simply going back to the pool of candidates that they had at the outset of this discussion? It's my understanding, Eamon, that this was really one and one A. I remember having conversations with players about this even three weeks ago at the Irish Open and them talking about what a good captain Luke Donald would be. There were a lot of rumors that Henrik Stenson was going to have the captaincy stripped from him. And Luke seemed to be not only the obvious choice, but the only choice, as you just pointed out. He was a vice captain on two teams. He's seen two separate captains handle two vastly different matches differently. He's had a lot of success as a player. He has good relationships with almost all of the players. Moving forward, he was the obvious choice, and this is going back weeks now. You know, Rex, the narrative for the European Ryder Cup team for the last 20 years, if not more, has been cohesion, togetherness, the rock in the storm, everyone rowing in the same direction. Is this a mess for Luke Donald to clean up, or is this going to be just a bump in the road in your mind? I don't think it's ideal because you look at it, like I said, I mean, the emotions of this morning's announcement, the emotions that we've seen really over the last few days, that doesn't dovetail with the person that we know Luke Donald is. That being said, I do think he's the perfect person for the job because you pointed out he is calm, he is measured, he's going to follow the blueprint. We've talked about this for years. The European Ryder Cup team is very, very good at sort of laying out exactly what's made them successful over the last few decades. That being said, time is short. There's a reason why captains get the better part of two years 
to prepare for this. There's a lot that goes into this. You need to worry about how you're going to be the makeup of the team. And when it comes to the European team, that's even more complicated because you're talking about points that they gain over here in the United States versus points they gain on the DP World Tour. You start talking about how many captain's picks you want. You start talking about how you want the golf course set up. He still has to round out his team room. He has a lot of work to do, but I would say he's the perfect person for what will be a difficult job. Mm. Rex Hager with the news. Luke Donald named the European Ryder Cup captain replacing Henrik Stenson. Is this a mess in your mind? It is a mess, but, you know, there's an old, great old Grover Cleveland line that in calm waters, every ship has a good captain. And the good ship Europe is not in calm waters right now. And it wasn't going to be even without the Henrik Stenson wrinkle here as well in having to be dismissed from the job because they're clearly caught in, in a flux of sorts between generations of players. That was kind of exposed, I think, a little bit at Whistling Straits last year when some guys have aged out and the next generation of, at the bottom rungs of the European Ryder Cup ladder aren't quite there yet. Yeah, the the Hoygaard twins, they haven't quite climbed up enough at this stage. So it's always going to be a rough kind of sailing through this Ryder Cup for Europe where I think Luke Donald is the best possible choice to add some kind of stability to this situation. He's got a lot of things going for him. He's got a solid record in the Ryder Cup. He has the respect of his peers. That's, that's very clear, and particularly the respect of the players that he's going to have as the anchors in, in this Ryder Cup. And he also has loyalty. And I mm. think that's what really what's going to count for a lot more. And he had an interesting quote last week when he was asked about the possibility of becoming the Ryder Cup captain. And this is what he said right here, that he was disappointed that Stenson will put his name forward, then go to live, that he understands the logic behind that. And then there's that last line at the end. He says, let me put it this way. I wouldn't be doing a Henrik. And that speaks to two things. It speaks to the character of Luke Donald, who, who knows that Henrik Stenson signed a contract saying he wouldn't do what he then did. Right. But it, it also tells you the divide that exists here, that players can understand why certain people, including Stenson, made the decisions they made, but the disloyalty in the method of making the decision runs pretty deep. That division runs pretty deep in what has historically been the Ryder Cup team room at this stage. Yeah, I mean, the thought was that the European players would do anything to defend Team Europe as far as the Ryder Cup is concerned. And now Sergio is gone. The face of the Ryder Cup for Europe is gone. Lee Westwood gone. Ian Poulter, the match play ninja, is gone. But you have someone in Luke Donald who, who has terrific Ryder Cup bona fides. Go back to 2012, for example, and maybe the moment that is overshadowed a bit on that Saturday because of Ian Poulter's great play on that Saturday evening. You had Sergio Garcia and Luke Donald in four balls against Tiger Woods and Steve Stricker. They had a four-up lead through nine holes. They get to 17, a devilish, difficult downhill par three. Tiger hits it stiff. Luke Donald steps up to that tee box, hits it inside of Tiger Woods' shot, so they continue that one-up lead, go on to hold on to win that match one-up. Undersized Luke Donald. We're talking about someone who on Sunday, Jose Maria Oothabo sent him out first. He takes down big, bad Bubba Watson, who was riling up the crowd in Chicago. The Masters champion. The, the Masters champion beat him 2-1. and one. I think Luke Donald's presentation as an undersized, short-hitting, former number one player in the world will do great things for trying to keep the cohesion together when you don't have that Sergio Rahm group that could have been the latter-day Seve and Ollie. Sergio and Rahm, they, they won three points. Uh, it, at Whistling Straits. So at least you have someone who has been there, been in those team rooms, and also performed very, very successfully. And not only been there, but he's been there four times on winning teams during what was probably that glory streak in, in European Ryder Cup history. And I, I think that's part of why he has the respect of his peers. It's not just the, the manner in which he comports himself. It's a guy who's not particularly big, not particularly powerful, didn't have a lot of big weapons. Right. But... He worked his tail off and got to number one in the world during an era of big hitters mm -hmm. in this game, and he wasn't one of them. He's almost kind of like the, a Justin Leonard character in that he's the epitome of professionalism, eked out a few wins here and there, got a handful of wins on the PGA Tour, 17 in his professional career around the world. But there's an interesting narrative that's now going to come around here because his runway is shorter yeah. to prepare for this. He's been robbed of four or five months 
in the process here, and he's going to keep the same backroom team, he said, that has currently been announced, which was the previous captain, Thomas Bjorn, and then Italy's Eduardo Molinari, who are the two vice captains that Stenson had announced. They are staying as part of the backroom team. But because that runway has been shortened and he's going to be more reliant upon the, the apparatus of the European Ryder Cup team that has existed in the past, and because his team is in flux, this whole idea that Europe is the Ryder Cup underdog every year, which they haven't been for a very long time. They like to perpetuate that myth because it puts more pressure on the American team every year. But now maybe they actually are the underdogs going into Rome, or at least it's solidified what was becoming obvious, which is that the European team has a lot more uncertainties and is a lot more volatile than the American team is. I think you're right, though. Dustin Johnson, who won five points for the United States team, is gone. You know, Bryson and, and Brooks, you know, they, they're not besties, uh, but two powerful players, two major championship winners are gone. But I think you're right that if the European narrative of being the underdog, you know, we were kind of laughing at it as they continue to tick off victory after victory after victory. Now I think that has to be the rallying cry of Luke Donald. The shorter time, you mentioned it, four and a half to five months less time to prepare than Zach Johnson. The fact that Poulter is gone and Sergio is gone and so much of that stability seemingly in the European Ryder Cup firmament is gone that Luke Donald can lean on that fact. The shorter runway of time, the fact that players are defecting to this rival circuit to the point where they're willing to give up a European Ryder Cup captaincy, that will be the rallying cry come this, turn, come, come this match and also leading up to the weeks before Italy. And that's the key difference here between Europe and the United States. Europe has only lost potential captains. Mm. They're easy to replace. America is the one that's losing Are the they easy to replace, there. though? Of course they are. If you go back a few years, you had Tony Jacklin, captain four years, four yep. cups in a row, and had a great record. Bernard Gallagher, captain three in a row. This idea that you have to shed a Ryder Cup captain mm. because it's someone else's turn is so outdated, and this may get us back to the point where if Luke Donald turns out to be a successful captain, we'll give see. it to him again in, in 25 at Europe best shed back. about seven Ryder Cup captains in the last couple of months. <laughs> when you think about it, future Ryder Cup captains.